Hey everyone, CPO here, and in this video series, it's all about brakes on the 2019 Golf R. This is particularly important for those of you who are needing to deal with a couple of things that may be unique to this particular vehicle, although it's not specific to this vehicle, but not everybody has it. So for example, uh, my front passenger brake has a wear sensor that has a little wiring harness that gets plugged into the brake pads. The brake pads I'm using don't have that. I'll show you how to deal with that. The other thing is I have an electronic parking brake in this car. So if you have one of those, I'll also show you how to deal with that. There's gonna be three videos in this series. The first one will be the front brakes, uh, and I'll talk about uh, changing out the pads, rotors. I'll be putting on stainless steel uh, brake lines and i'll also talk about an important yet sometimes misstep of bedding the brakes i'm also going to be doing a fluid flush but that'll be at the end the second video will be the rear brakes and uh, we'll walk through the uh, the same thing pads rotors brake lines and then I'll talk about how to deal with that emergency brake. The third video in this series is going to be flushing the brake fluid. I'm gonna be changing out the old fluid with new fluid, and it's also gonna be part of the bleeding process, which will be necessary if you change the brake lines, which I'm doing, the brake hoses. So even if I wasn't flushing fluid, I'd still need to bleed the brakes. So that video three, will be important even if you're not doing a full fluid flush. This is it, let's get to it. This is video number one in the series, front brakes. All right, everyone, before we get started, I do wanna give a quick disclaimer. Look, I'm not a professional mechanic. We're talking about safety system here, brakes. So if you're not 100% comfortable or you don't like the way I do things, please have a professional do it. Uh, by the way, I'm super happy with the quick jack purchase. That has made my life so much easier. All right, so this video, we're starting with the front brakes, and I'll show you sort of my process. Again, um, might be a little bit different than other people's. One thing to note, I did get Zimmerman rotors, which I'll talk about here in a minute. Those have a protective coating on them as opposed to a oil or a grease that you have to clean off. So these don't need to be cleaned in the same way you might have to clean other rotors. So keep that in mind. Now, if you're curious about when to change your brake, you can get these cool little brake checkers, uh, these little gauges. Uh, I got them off Amazon. I'll put a link down in the description of the video. Green is obviously good. You can see I'm in the about the middle yellow, so I'm not necessarily due for a brake change yet. I wouldn't need that until I get into these little red ones, but I am changing for performance purposes. All right, these are the Zimmerman rotors. They're basically plain vented rotors, kind of like what I have from factory. And you can see I've got some grooving on the current rotors that I have on the car. The Zimmermans are cool. They're coated and not greased. So they're basically just uh, install and ready to go. I'm using Ferrodo pads. These are the DS 2500s. They're known to be a good hybrid street slash track pad. They do not, however, have the wear sensor on the, uh, the, the front right uh, break. So we'll deal with that later. And you can see this is what a green like full pad um, would look like with the checker, which is what the Frodo's are. And I'm about halfway there. This is the, the level of my current pad. So, uh, you know, I'm about halfway through my pads. And then I'm using these StopTech braided lines should give a more firmer pedal and uh, and yeah, not uh, not expand so much as the rubber would. So yeah, that's that. Oh, uh, Brake fluid, I'm also doing RBF 600, a little bit more of a racing level brake fluid. So when I do my bleeding, I'm just gonna go ahead and flush at the same time. Now I am loosening up my uh, master cylinder cap. I'm looking to make sure that I don't have it like super full because when we compress the, the uh, piston back into the brake caliper, we may spill if we're too full, which I'm not in this case. Now I'm loosening up these brake caliber bolts. Uh, you're supposed to replace these every time you take them out. So you can get these at the auto parts store or I got everything from FCP Euro, uh, pretty awesome. Anyway, pulling that out and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use a little um, bungee cord so that I can not have to have this hanging on the brake line. And before we get started, I know I need to push that piston back into the caliper because I'm putting new pads. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take care of that right away. I'm using a C-clamp. There are a variety of tools that you can use. In fact, I end up renting one from the local auto parts store for the rears because they need a special tool that turns and I'll explain that in the next video. Uh, but the normal C-clamp works fine. Uh, or if you have a humongous set of like uh, channel locks or something like that, 
uh, that might work as well. But this C-clamp has always uh, worked for me in this case. And basically you're just pushing it back all the way until it's flush. Now these bolts back here are pretty heavily torqued, so I need a breaker bar to knock them loose. These are reusable. You can reuse them after you take them out. So uh, as long as they're clean and in good shape. Uh, so once I break the initial torque, then I can go through and uh, use a regular uh, ratchet, and then that will make the job a lot easier to get them out. When I, I take the uh, top one out, I don't take it all the way out, and that way I've got something sort of hanging there uh, as I take the bottom one completely out so that the thing just doesn't flop on the floor while I'm trying to unscrew that last one. So I like to do a little bit more controlled disassembly when I can. Although, you know, hey, sometimes it just doesn't work the way I plan. Anyway, this is looking up from the bottom uh, front of the car. Like if you imagine like you're underneath where the engine is looking up at the right side uh, just for to get your bearing straight. This comes out and comes out with the pads right in there. It's pretty easy uh, to just slide that whole thing out as an assembly and then to uh, knock the pads out. I can just squeeze them together right here and they will come all the way through their little channels and pop right out. So you can see I got quite a bit of wear left on these pads, but eh, it is what it is. So I am going to remove the set screw holding the rotor on. I did put a lug bolt in there just to sort of hold the top so that the whole thing doesn't fall down on me. Again, controlled disassembly. Um, so once I take that set screw out, the entire rotor is loose and free. And my car's fairly new. Your car might be completely rusted together, in which case you don't have this problem. Uh, you can use a rubber mallet or something to bang it uh, to loosen up that rust. But I don't have that issue. You know, I guess I'm lucky in that regard. So there we go. The new rotor is just going right on. Um, and right into place and I just need to line up where that set screw goes and if you've got that screw at the ready it's going to make your life a lot easier so just go ahead and get that tightened down and then that will sort of hold the rotor into place while you finish the rest of the job so yeah pretty easy and that set screw also helps you line up all the other holes now I do have a sticker here I'm just going to gently scrape off with a razor blade just because it'll probably wear off when I'm doing the bedding process but uh, I figured I'd go ahead and get rid of that and uh, any sticky residue I had before I get started. This little brake cleaner just to get rid of the sticky residue there from that sticker. I don't know what the sticker was for. It came that way from FCP Euro. All right, so that is the rotor. The passenger side is exactly the same as the driver's side, with the exception of that uh, wear sensor, which I'll talk about. And I'll, I'll flip over to the passenger side and show you that. Uh, later on in the video and then the uh, the brake line gets routed underneath some of that sensor wiring so I'll show you the passenger side of the brake line assembly uh, but anyway now we can put our uh, carrier back on using the same two bolts that we had before these will get torqued down to 200 newton meters which is quite a bit um, it's the very max setting basically of my half inch torque wrench so and thankfully, um, I didn't have to buy a new torque wrench, but it literally maxed out my capability. So keep that in mind. Uh, then I'm just going to pop the pads in. They kind of clip into place and these little spring clips, and you can just hammer them in there with your fist like I do. And uh, make, make sure they're seated against the rotor, just like that. And then I'm going to take the caliper and... Uh, Get the bungee out of them. Don't forget to take the bungee cord out. I can't tell you how many times I've accidentally left a bungee cord or a coat hanger or whatever I'm using to hang calipers in there. Uh, thankfully, I didn't do it on this time, but just make sure you uh, remember to take that out. You have to squeeze a little bit um, those um, little slider uh, bolt holes uh, there to get them into place and then your new screw hardware these are the ones that should be replaced if you're doing it right now most people will replace them after the second time so they'll reuse them once but because this is my first time to do brakes on this car and i didn't own it the entire time i don't know if they've ever been replaced or if they've been reused or what so i'm just going to replace them to be safe uh, these are uh, a lot smaller torque value i don't remember off the top of my head what they are but i will put it on the screen for you um, so that you've got that information. That's a 17 millimeter wrench, by the way, that you need to, uh, it has to be a skinny wrench, or you can use vice grips or something like that. All right, so for the brake lines, I am cracking open uh, the brake line connections there, um, just uh, to make sure that they're not rusted tight, and I'm 
tightening down the master cylinder, that will greatly slow the flow of fluid once I start removing these lines. Then you remove these little clips here. Um, I use a screwdriver and sort of rotate it through and then grab them with a pair of channel locks. And uh, yeah, sometimes I can't hang on to them. But now that that's loose, that's what you're looking for there. Uh, and then there's this other uh, clip, boom, that goes right there. And that just holds the entire uh, line sort of in place. And then once you have those two out, you are good to uh, go ahead and remove both ends. So here I am on the passenger side now. And uh, basically all I'm doing is undoing the, the factory line uh, from the top and then screwing in the new hose. Um, and it will, um, you've got a few seconds before it starts flowing out of the new hose. So uh, you'll see this start to flow here in a second. So you've got, uh, the, the better you prepared you are, the quicker you can make this happen, the less fluid you're gonna lose. Um, you can see here I'm working on getting the banjo bolts put through. It goes, it goes bolt, then a copper washer, then your hose, then a copper washer, and then into the caliber. Uh, so copper washers on both sides of that little banjo uh, uh, bolt hole thing, I guess, that's on the end of the brake line. And then those get torqued down really just until they're tight. Um, it's not a huge torque spec. I think it's like 14 Newton meters or something crazy small like that. Just, uh, just get them tightened down, snug, uh, and then just a little, little oomph pass snug. Uh, and just make sure they're not leaking whenever you're doing your um, your testing. Uh, wipe everything down. The brake fluid's pretty corrosive. You can see also I have a cardboard box underneath there. That's capturing all of the fluid and uh, and it's not going directly on the ground. I like cardboard boxes because I can th throw stuff in it like the uh, the old brake hose and all that stuff. And, uh, and it soaks up any of the fluids. But this is the passenger side. So you can see how these... Uh, the brake hose runs underneath these other sensor wires. That's what's different on the passenger side than the driver's side. But, uh, oh yeah, and we need to put these clips back in. I use a tiny little hammer uh, or sometimes the, uh, the end of a screwdriver and then hammer with a screwdriver. And then if you get any brake fluid on your rotors, just make sure you clean that off. And then we're back to the driver's side. It's exactly the same as the passenger side, except for you don't have to go underneath all those sensor wires. So there we go. That is uh, brake uh, pads and rotors. Now we got to deal with that sensor. Remember on the passenger side, I told you there's this wear sensor. You can buy pads that have them. They plug right in. But if you don't do that, you need to figure out how to short it so it doesn't think that you need new brakes. If you don't plug this back in, you're going to get a light on your dash telling you to change your brakes. You can buy this plug from places, but I'm just gonna make my own with the now old and about to be thrown away brake pad. So all you need to do is take these two wires that come out of it and tie them together so that you're shorting that out. And basically what your system is looking for is, is there connectivity between those two wires? If so, your brakes must be good. Now, the downside of this is you're not gonna get an alert that says your brake pads are getting low, so you're gonna have to check them manually um, or have somebody check them for you. So uh, once I get those tied down, I am uh, gonna try and find a way to make it nice looking. I'm using some shrink tubing and just fitting it in there. And yeah, you can use black electrical tape, you can not use anything, whatever you wanna do. Um, but this is the method I'm using is just with this, um, shrink tubing. And then once I get it into place, I'm going to heat it up one more time. And then what you'll see me do is just sort of pinch it around the outside, which should make it, you know, somewhat um, sort of sealed on the end there. This, by the way, is automotive shrink tubing. It's got some adhesive on the inside. And then a little zip tie to hold it all nice and, and uh, together. And then this thing can go right back into that sensor. And yeah, now we won't have a brake warning light. So that's my method of dealing with this problem. If you've got the, uh, the sensor and you have brake pads that don't have a sensor wire, this is the solution. Uh, tidied it up a little bit more with another zip tie, but there you go. Bam, just like that, homemade. Now that we have our brakes done, uh, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and like push the pedal to uh, recycle that fluid and get that sort of back up to pressure. And uh, you should be able to go around and check and make sure that your brakes are solid. They shouldn't be rattly. They should be, you know, nice and tight.
Don't forget, you will need to bleed your brakes if you change your brake hoses. Uh, if you didn't change your brake hoses, you should be good to go. The third video in the series is gonna be on bleeding the brakes, the way I'm bleeding the brakes. Um, so you need to watch that because you took off the hoses if you did that in this part of the video. But what I wanna talk about now is bedding. And bedding is something that a lot of people don't think about, but it's important to follow the manufacturer's instructions for the brake pads that you have. Uh, these are Ferrotos, so they have actually information on brake bedding, but basically what I did is went out about 40 to 50 miles an hour and did, did some gradual stops uh, about 20 or 25 times. The goal is not to overheat the brake pads and rotors, but to sort of transfer a layer of film uh, and sort of break them in. And, and uh, it's kind of an interesting process, but it will go a long way towards making your brakes work well and last long. So you can see once I get done with that bedding process, which doesn't take very long, but you can see, uh, first of all, that protective coating is all gone off of the rotor surface. And you can see that little, that modeled surface, that's actually brake pad material that is transferred onto the rotors. And that's gonna make a good grippy surface uh, whenever I stop. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you watch the next video in this series to see the entire process. Remember, there's three videos in total, front brakes, rear brakes, and the fluid flush slash brake bleeding. So uh, make sure you get whatever info you need. I hope it's helpful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. But as always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.